technologies. This is probably the main reason why we are taking this training. So let me give you a better overview around the technologies used during this training. Here are some of the technologies that you use to write code. Java EE7. The Java EE specification is really rich and some of the JE specifications covered in this training are JPA. This is used to map our objects to tables in a relational database and to allow us to perform operations on this object, such as insert, update and read. Beam validation defines a set of annotations and API that allow programmers to easily validate the fields of their objects based just on metadata. JMS, a very powerful specification, allowing systems to extend messages asynchronously. This new version of this specification has really made the API cleaner and easier to use. Actually, since JE5, one of the main goals has been to make the APIs cleaner and easier to use, in contrast to the really complex and boilerplate specifications for JE4, and there is no doubt that the JE spec has been improving dramatically in every release. EJB, powerful components that provide us a lot of benefits, such as scalability, robustness, concurrency management, transactions, dependency injection, and much more. CDI. This specification was introduced in Java EE6 and allows every simple POJO to be a managed object, simplifying the dependency injection model, not only for CDI beans, but also for other managed beans, such as EJBs. This is just one of the aspects of this rich, of this rich specification. Other powerful and advanced resources that will be covered in this training are CDI events and extensions. JAXRS used to create REST services based on annotations. This new version also brings a new client API, making it much easier to create REST clients. Besides the simple creation of services, we also cover other topics such as security, interceptors and filters for REST services, both on client and server side. Security. As we could see in the basic requirements of our system, we have a lot of things to cover when it comes to security such as authentication and authorization. As you can see, you'll be covering a lot about JE. I'm sure this will be one of the hottest topics on this training. Java 8. This new version of Java has introduced a lot of new features and improvements. And these are some of the new features that will be employed in our project, such as Lambda expressions, date and time API, streams, and more. One external library is JSON. Instead, so instead of relying directly in the JAXB implement specification, we use the JSON library to have total control in how you parse JSON to our objects and vice versa. So these are some technologies that you'll be using to write code. What about to test code? Creating tests is also a large field with a lot of options. It's pretty much everything in Java. So here are some, here are some of the tools that will be utilized to create our automated tests. JUnit, a very popular framework. We use it for both our unit and integration tests. Hamcrest, used along with JUnit, provides a lot of syntax sugar methods to use in our tests assertions. Mokito, in unit tests, very often you need to mock some of the boundaries of the code you want to test. In our case, Mokito is the library used for this purpose, as it provides a good API and it's very simple to use. JSON assert. Our REST interfaces will be 100% based on JSON messages. Assert JSON messages using string.equals, for example, is quite tricky, as if you have any small difference even in the formatting, your test will fail. This library is, smart in the is smarter than that and really compares the fields and structure of JSON ignoring formatting issues and other points, such as ordering, depending on how you want to use the library, of course. Archelian, creating integration tests for JE applications was never an easy task, as you need a container running your real application with all the dependencies. That's the main purpose of this fantastic library, making our lives much easier when it comes to test JE applications. H2 and HSQLDB 
These are lightweight databases that we will use for both our unit and integration tests. Postman. This is a Chrome extension that allows us to easily test our REST interfaces manually using Chrome web browser. And to compile and deploy. For things regarding dependency management and packaging, where we'll be using Maven, that is a widely used tool to manage and build your applications. It has a very good extension mechanism based on plugins, so you can use plugins for a variety of tasks. It also supports profiles definition, which we use in our project, where we want to have one profile to compile and run our unit tests, another profile to do this, and also run our integration tests, which usually takes longer. Application Server. For Application Server, we'll be using Wildfly 8. This is an application server that is formerly known as JBoss and uh, recently changed the name for, for, for Wildfly and it's a very powerful open source application server widely used and with a huge community it's very lightweight, fully JE7 certified and provides a lot of resources ID, you know that for coding Java you usually need an ID to help you so in our case we'll be using Eclipse but as our project is based on Maven you can use any ID that supports it however as I'm used to Eclipse and I'll be using I'll be using this ID to develop our project but feel free to use an ID that you are familiar with and database for a database you'll be using PostgreSQL this is probably the most powerful open source relation database and we use it for our manual tests so that's a more detailed overview of the technologies that you'll be using in our project as you can see you'll be covering a lot and more importantly, you see how they can be fit together in the goal of meeting our system requirements.